luck. I'll see you there. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. The words radio and Ohio both end in I-O. And I-O is one of the moons of Jupiter. Have fun trying to figure out whatever the f*** that means. I-O, I-O. It's the Alan Cox Show. I'm 100 points. By the way, I hope you can get the lowdown on the buzzard bike that we're giving away this summer. Uh, all the details for you are going to be coming. Well, the first key, I should say, is going to be with Rover on Monday morning. We're teaming up with Budweiser to give away a custom uh, brand new Harley. It's going to have uh, buzzard flourishes on it. We'll have all your leathers and all that kind of stuff, too. But we're giving away three keys per day. Rover, Stansbury, yours truly. And then we'll be out doing stuff, too. I know Dieter's doing some key drops. So we'll have those updates for you. But uh, the details are at WMMS.com. Somebody is going to get a key that fires up this new Harley, uh, courtesy of WMMS. So Rover will have the first key for you Monday morning between 7.30 and 8. And then he'll tell you when that next one is going to be. And then Dan will tell you when mine is going to be. And so on and so on. But uh, that'll be very exciting. Between Buzzard Fest and the Buzzard Bike, and we're going to be giving away money again soon. Uh, Hoping to get that, uh, uh, I want that, I'm hoping that the uh, boat comes back. That'd be fun to do. Yeah, we need a boat trip. Yeah. (laughs) It'd be a a good summer all the way around. If you listen to the show on iHeartRadio from outside Ohio, uh, tell me where you do that like to know where our bureau chiefs are. Uh, Jeff listens in Stone Ridge, Virginia. Claude is in Surprise, Arizona. Scott's up in the Sag Nasty. He's in Saginaw, Michigan. <gasps> you know what Saginaw, Michigan is right by? Um, yeah. What? Grand no. Rapids, Michigan. You know what's going to happen in Grand Rapids, Michigan this weekend? No. I'm going to be performing at Dr. Grin's Comedy Club. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so he should come. Okay. (laughs) Also, I was standing outside the door looking at you because I thought you were doing a live read. I didn't realize that the show had come back on yet. Right. That's why I saw you look at me like, what is this weirdo doing? I was waiting for you to finish (laughs) That. And I'm like, man, this is like the longest life. I'm just in here talking, man. I, I don't. I looked out. I didn't know what you were. Um, because you usually do one like right before we come back from a break. Sometimes, and I was like waiting for you to finish it up, and I was like, oh yeah. no, I think that. <laughs> By the way, I I, I know that you I, I know you were you were just breaking your shoehorn out, but you you should let people know that Saginaw is nowhere near Grand Rapids. Sure, it is. They're both in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> they are both in Michigan. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but Grand Rapids, of course, they're on the lake or near the lake. And uh, uh, Saginaw, of course, up closer to the web of the thumb. Oh, wait. What am I thinking of? What's the S that's by Grand Rapids? South Grand Rapids? I don't no. know. South Haven? Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, the Sag Nasty is up there by, like, Frankenmuth and Bay City. And that's where my Saugatuck. my wife's family is from that area. I'm thinking of Saugatuck. Ah, well, there you go. Um, yeah, so if uh, our bureau chief there in Saginaw wants to drive the two and a half hours to see Mary, then you can do that. Anyway, we also have a lot of bureau chiefs in the uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're very well repped in the Carolinas. And one of them sent me the story about the guy in Charlotte who... Huh, Well, he punched a baby in the face. <gasps> what? How old is this baby? One year old. Oh. The guy's 26. Didn't know the woman. I assume didn't know the baby. You know, they made it a point to say that he was a stranger to the woman. What if he did know the baby? I know oh. that baby. Yep. That baby is, uh, earned That the baby stole my girlfriend. <laughs> what a weird thing to do. Is the baby okay? It's not his baby. So it's not the baby mama or his kid. Uh, this woman is on the street in Charlotte. She's pushing her kid uh, there in a stroller. And uh, the guy just walked up and uh, punched the baby in the face. 
Of course, a couple of she starts screaming. So there's like bystanders and witnesses who grab this guy and they call some cops over. 26 year old Rico Williams is being charged with assault on a child under 12. So I'll tell you what, boy, life is wild, right? Despite what they're feeding you a constant menu of on cable news, violent crime is the lowest it's been in a long, long time. But it's the kind of crime that's happening that's weird. There's baby punching and there's all kinds of weird stuff. There's pro athletes having their identical car stolen at gunpoint in major metropolitan areas, or at least downtown Cleveland. And then there's um, Charlotte baby punchers running around. That is not going to become a franchise name. They're not going to change the name of the Hornets to the baby punchers. The Charlotte baby punchers. No. And who? Co- now the kid is fine. They took the kid to a local children's hospital, and he was um, examined and released. You figure? I'm unless glad you that the go- baby's fine. I'm yeah. glad too, man. I mean, uh, but what a story. You're fine. You're not going to remember it. Also, what a loser. You punched a baby and didn't knock it out. Yeah, but babies sleep so much anyway that... <laughs> yeah, but you... I mean... They didn't say the baby was awake. He could have punched a sleeping baby. In which case, the baby would have awakened and cried or whatever. Yeah. But also, you got to get... Babies are kind of soft, right? I mean, you got to... You're not going to get like a... I just need so much more information from that story than they've provided. But obviously the headline is enough. Man punches baby. And uh, that's all uh, anybody really needs. Hmm. Uh, If you want to leave us messages on that iHeartRadio app, maybe you are one of our bureau chiefs, you know, maybe you're in Northeast Ohio. There are the parts where MMS starts to get a little crackly out towards Madison in that way, and you do have to listen to us on the app if you want to. But you can always leave us messages there. Alan, catching an old episode of the podcast, you were talking about uh, southern accents, and it really, it really depends on where. Um, you know, if my doctor's from West Virginia and he, you know, he comes in the room and says, "Well, I was willing to save the leg, but I just couldn't, couldn't quite do it." You know, I'm, I'm going to trust that guy a lot less than someone coming in, you know, thick cowboy accent. There's just nothing we could do for you. Hmm. So then it's a ma- So then irrespective of accent, it's just a matter of pitch. I think so. Le- more than accent. I mean, I it's think like there's Jim, a- Jim Varney versus Sam Elliott. Exactly. Okay. So higher pitched, like in his example, he's like, hey, I tried to do the thing. But if you come in like, well, there's no goddamn thing I can do about like that, you take uh, you just take deeper voices more. But seriously those are also then. two wildly different accents. Uh, a Texas and uh, a West Virginia, yeah, West Virginia, like that, those sound very, very different. Yeah, but the accents differ even within Texas. Right, people who live there can tell if you're from East Texas or West Texas mm-hmm. or born or raised in mm-hmm. Dallas. Couldn't save With all your the leg, goddamn lip, what? We couldn't save your leg, but we saved your baby. <laughs> After it got it punched. Right before you punched it. Okay, so pitch then. Yeah, that makes sense. That's okay. Boy, I was thinking of pound cake. This is something that um, maybe he should consider. I was reading about these two dudes who, these brothers who are kind of like wannabe influencers over there on uh, the TikToks and the Instagrams. And they're like, these guys have, uh, uh, they're constantly posting like paparazzi photos. They say they have millions of Instagram fans, but no one has ever heard of them before. Ryan and Sammy Halsa. Not to be confused with Ryan and Sammy Salsa. Or who, Sosa. of course, he used to play for the Chicago Cubs. Uh, Ryan and Sammy Halsa have an entire paparazzi TikTok and Instagram devoted to them. And people are saying it's because they're hiring people to take pictures of them and post them, like paparazzi photos. This is what Cody needs. He needs a pal or somebody that he can uh, give a stipend to and go, hey, I need you to always be taking photos of me when I'm out doing stuff. So it'll look like somebody posted a photo of me, but obviously it's one that was taken. So you you make it look like it's without your knowledge. Yeah, just get some candid shots. Um, 
I don't know if I'm this vain because I'm also aware that not a lot of people, more people than not, don't know who I am. But that's why you need this. Nobody knows who these guys are either. But that's how you get a buzz going. People go, wow, these guys must – they that, because that's what the mindset is in social media. They must be someone because right. people are filming them. What do they do? I don't know, but there are pictures of them. <laughs> it's like the Thousand Pound Sisters. Like, oh, they must be filming a reality show. We just don't know of it yet. So let me just document this. Look just- at these two giant women. They must be filming a reality show. And more and more, that's a pretty fair assumption. Except they're going to get followed around by giant television cameras, not like somebody on an iPhone. The TikTok page Hollywood Paparazzi uh, chronicles these two dudes, Sammy and David Halsa, who seem to be very famous, except the charge is that they're faking these videos for their uh, accounts, which I think is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Because then what they do is, in some of their videos... They, like, are pretend yelling at the paparazzi. Like, they're mad at him. That's even funnier. Yeah. And so he's, like, yelling at one of the videos. They said he's yelling at a guy from TMZ. But if you go to TMZ and search the guy, they've never posted anything about this dude. Yeah, Perez Bilton would have been on this if this were a thing. But they're not celebrities. Right. That's why it's not going to be in Perez Bilton. Mm -hmm. This isn't hot celebrity goss. No. This is hot wannabe goss. And that's not what Perez Bilton handles. And that's cold. That's cold gas. <laughs> that is that is ice cold gas. Hey, paparazzo! Hey, you want a job? By the way, you might recall you film school nerds, la movie La Dolce Vita from the 60s. A very, very famous movie, classic film, right? And the uh, word paparazzi comes from the guy in the movie. There was a guy named paparazzo. And so that just kind of became shorthand for paparazzi because it was a movie about, it was a stylized uh, movie about um, tabloid photographers and and chronicling. It wasn't a documentary, obviously. But my question was always, how did paparazzo get his name attached? How did that become shorthand? Because the main character in that movie is Rubini. In alternate universe, paparazzi could be called Rubini. We could have called him Rubini's. Is it just because it's more fun to say? I don't know. I was always curious about that. You say, I hired a bunch of Rubinis. Like, Mm -hmm. what the hell are you talking about? You mean paparazzi? I do not. Nope. So, something to consider, pound cake. When you're out with a friend or your boyfriend or whatever, you know, um, throw him a little, your boyfriend, let's say, throw him a little extra that night. But in the meantime, when you guys are out, he goes, like, behind a bush and is taking a picture of you. Or just across the street. And you're not looking, obviously, because it's being Mm -hmm. done surreptitiously. It's being done without your knowledge, and so... Or I could just have, like, I do the whole phone in the hand and just like, "Mm -mm, mm-mm, mm-mm, not today. I don't look good today. Well, no, that's too on the nose, though. You don't want the hand across... You don't want Alec Baldwin, like, punching the paps. You want to be the guy that don't even know it's happening. Because then it makes it look like oh, but, but I'm like, no. other people are learning who you are. You, like, you don't even think anyone's taking your picture because it wouldn't occur to you. Because as you said, well, I'm not that big of a deal. But you must be because people are taking your picture. Or I could just be, I could be like, you guys are out here every freaking day. Leave me alone. Guys, Let would you stop? Please. Yeah, outside your hot, uh, like at the end of your driveway. You guys want yeah. me to see me, see me take my trash out? So stupid. You go look through it. Like he starts I'm, pulling all his trash out of the bag. Yeah, just just be aggravated. Just be aggravated. All the time. I'm like, I, I I didn't ask for this. I, I you know I just banged someone really hot and famous. I didn't ask for this. Now he's overselling it. Who'd he you just, bang? He can't he can't <laughs> take a good idea and just run with it. Who'd you bang? I was really hot and famous. Oh. Uh, no one. That's really mm, hot. Nice. Mm, be able to think on your feet, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You got a yes and us once in a while. We cracked you and we weren't even trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We asked one quickly. question. <laughs> what do you think those Rubinis are going to do to you when you're out there with their flashing cameras getting you outside, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. W- walking out being a book, a newly minted book gay? <laughs> I have to take the L. I can't tell you guys because I signed an NDA. 
You got to take the what? I have to take the L. I have to just make it seem like, oh, oh I didn't bang anybody famous. Oh. Not the E-L. Take the L. Gotcha. Hmm. You know, we're going to Vegas the week of the 4th, and I was reading a thing. As is the case with so many other things in life, it's becoming more and more and more for the rich. And people have started to notice that regular people are just losing more often in casinos in Vegas because the companies are kind of stacking the deck. They're trying to make it so that really the only people who want to gamble the most are the high-value customers. So the people who don't have that much to spend or lose, they're weeding them out. And obviously it's not something that's going to stop because more and more people go to Vegas every year. But more and more people are also losing money because the casinos want to filter out people with less money. Because they figure, well, if the odds of winning go down, and hence the payouts go down, then people who don't have as much to gamble won't gamble. But it'll bring in high-value customers. That's not how this works. <laughs> that's, what they're, that's what they're saying they're doing, right, is what, what I'm saying. I'm not, this I'm isn't not, an opinion. This is no, the, no, 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 the, the CEO of Caesars Entertainment says this is what we're doing. I'm not doubting it. I'm saying that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is these people— Oh, no, people won't stop gambling. I'm just saying stop. I'm they're, saying this is what they're trying to do. But they're what they're going to end up doing is ruining these people's lives further than— the addicts themselves are already ruining the it. The casinos are not ruining anyone's life. What I'm saying is if you shift the odds or whatever they're saying that they're going to do so that people who are spending low amounts of money, those people who have low amounts of money are probably going to get more desperate to get it. And then it's going to be real bad. They're going to start doing things that they shouldn't. Don't go to the casino. For how many times do I have to tell I you know. that that's not how it's, addiction it's works? It's my addiction. What I'm saying is, Dude, you talk if you so much crap about addiction, <laughs> and it's no like gambling, reckless. I do. It's reckless. gambling, I do. Because gambling, I do. You don't think it's real, like a real addiction. The way that you talk uh, about it, 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 I'll it's take your like, word for it. Nobody is put, my word. It's nobody, science. nobody is putting a gun to your head and walking you into the casino. Nobody's putting a gun to your head and making you put a needle in your arm. You get your your chemical brain is not the same as other people's. Your brain does not function the same way that a person who is not an addict. Yeah, but not every addiction is exactly the same either. And that's what and I'm no, trying to explain no to heroin you. No heroin addict is going to go, it's just, it's no different than gambling. Gambling addiction. Nobody's going to tell you that. What? I, no, because one is a mental addiction, one is a physical yes, addiction. Yes, that's my only point. That's but, my only point. No, but the way that you talk about it is like have some self control. What are you? Because you it's not a. It's not a. Fi- well, you're projecting now. I'm just saying. You've used the word degenerate before. Well, so have you. I'm joking. It's not. Okay, I'm joking too. Okay. Oh, you don't believe me, but I believe you. No. It's not a physical addiction. That's my only a, That's my only point. But it, it, you do understand, and I don't know that you even believe me when I say this, that when you are a gambling addict, the chemistry in your brain is not the same as the chemistry in other people's brains. Is it a physical addiction? That's not the point. My point you, is your brain does is not it function a the addic- correct way. Is it a physical addi- addiction? It's not. The, your, your point is mute. mute. No, you. <laughs> mute. which one is mute. it? You just told me it's not a physical addiction. It's not a physical addiction. That's in all that, I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Alan. That's all I'm that saying. But that doesn't mean that it's not an addiction. I didn't say it wasn't. That's how it's you project it. No. It's you not project a, it nope, as. It's not a physical addiction. So does that mean that anything that's not a physical addiction does not count at all? If I have $5,000 and I walk into a casino, no one's pushing me in there. You're not addicted to it. I mean, if it's an addiction, you don't treat it like that. What do you mean? You go, well, I'm banned in Ohio, but I went to Pennsylvania, went to the casino. That's. Do you understand how much of an addict behavior that is to go out of state to get your fix? But why walk in? Because you're, oh my God. How much, I'm, ask, I, I'm am, asking you. Am I speaking you. German? I'm asking you. When you are addicted to something, it is not as easy as self-control. My brain does not work the same way as your brain. Your brain working a different way. Absolutely. Uh, that's not even part of the argument. So then I don't understand but you why cannot, it's so hard for you to understand. Because you cannot treat a physical addiction I'm like I'm not treating a, it like a physical addiction. You're completely you are. disregarding it. No, I'm not. When you talk about it like I can't this, d- you do. No, I'm not. No but, one's putting a gun to your head and making you go to the Mary, casino. you, what did I just say? You went to another state and go, so you're not treating it like something that you should avoid at all costs. 
I am. And what I'm what you're not seeing is that you're like, oh, you must not have the self-control to not go to another state and not you are so afflicted by an addiction that you have to travel to another state to get your fix. You're thinking of it as hmm. you are less than because you can't control this. It's not, and no, not, no, 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 no. No, don't throw less than at me. It's not about less than. That's my what only, you just said. It's not a physical addiction, so it's not the same. Well, I didn't say less than. I said they're not the same because they are not. So you're. I didn't say less than, more than. Okay. I said they are not the same. Would that you, is my only point. Would you agree that you talk about gambling addiction like it's like it's uh, people's? It's their own fault. No, I just can't identify with it. So you're you're gonna say that there is no point when you speak about gambling addiction that you say things that maybe are a little condescending. Well, I don't know if it's kind of sending. I mean, I told you what the head of Caesars says they want to do, and you said, well, that's not how it's going to work because of X, Y, and Z. Right. I'm saying that these people- I don't know how it's going to work. I are, only know how they want it to work. These people who are already addicted, if they're going to shift the odds even further out of their favor, it's going to ruin people's lives. And then you said, Caesars isn't ruining anyone's life. That was that was the whole and, argument. Was right. that the casino's not responsible for this because no one's making them do it. But just like any other thing, they're preying on people who have a predisposition to go in there and spend money like there that. Is, and I'm not saying everybody's like that. There's no doubt about that. They are absolutely preying on those people. Right. But that wasn't my point. I know that's not your point, but I was saying that they think that this is going to shift it so that more people with higher amounts of money are going to come in, and it's not. It's going to drive the people who already don't have the money, to a desperate place. Well, here's and it's going to be worse for them. But here's what I wonder. Is if you're in the casino business, man, I would imagine they are running all kinds of data sets all the time on gamblers' behavior. And I would think that more than any other organization, because it's your lifeblood that you take advantage of those people, I would think that more than any other organization, a gambling company would know exactly how they can move the pressure points to get people in to do, obviously not you know, 100%, but a man, I would think that they would have a really good handle on what they can do or not do to get people in or not get people in. They don't have to do anything. Having the, having the machines and the tables there isn't more than enough. Just being open 24 hours a day, being there, existing. Well, then why do these guys do. think that's going to work? I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. That's why I said immediately that's not how this is going to turn out. You're not going to attract higher rollers. You're going to turn the low rollers uh, <laughs> into desperate. Homeless? De yes, desperate people who are willing to do anything, who are going to explode. I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people – especially in Vegas, have addiction issues. So if you, let's say you walked in and saw that the, or heard that the payouts were less, wouldn't you go to a place where there were more? And so that place has effectively weeded you out, which is what they're trying to do. To a certain degree, sure. But what, I mean, there's more questions than that where it's or like, if, okay, or, is or it... if the buy-in costs more or things like that, sure. right? Yeah, yeah that's where it's gonna... like, I don't have $500 to play on a table. Is that what they're talking about? Is it table games? Are, are they? Everything. So if they're like... adjusting slot machines to pay out less, is it only penny machines? Is it all, you know what I mean? So mm. that's what they didn't I mean get by that like... deep. They didn't get right. that deep into it. But my thought was just like, man, they must know something about how these things work. Like, hey, if we do this, I mean, it's nothing that you're going to see change maybe within a month, but like they go year to year, if we did this, this happens and X, Y, the variables change this way. If they were to take away, like up all their table limits to even 25 or $50, then yes, they would have the somewhat, to some degree, what they're looking for. Because if you know I can't gamble in here for less than $50 a hand, then you're like, I can't go there. Right. But what they're going to end up doing is creating pockets of people, like I said, who are really desperate and who are like, I have to hit at this place. And people, here's the other thing about gambling, it doesn't make any sense. People are crazy superstitious. So if they're like, this is the place that I win, I have to do anything I can to right. make sure that I go back to this place. This is my lucky casino. How, yeah. My how lucky do table. I, how do I get enough money to still continue to gamble here? On that superstition, then I got to go to a break.
Does it just take one win to yes. fire up the superstition? 100%. Not so, even superstition to fire up the addiction. So you're not like, well, I'm just talking about the superstition. So if somebody goes, hey, that's my lucky table because I won five times there, that's never going to be the case that you won five times. So can you well, when can you win one? I mean, just just based on the odds, can you win once and go, that's my lucky table? That's enough to bring you back to that specific table or slot machine. If mm. you walk past and you're like, I won five grand last time I sat down here, I'm going to try again. Right. Even though you could play the same game at another table, but you'd go, well, that might not be a... It might not be your lucky spot. It might be the specific seat at the table. This is my luck. I mean, people do that with sports. Right. You know, I, I've never washed this LeBron jersey, and this is the one that they won the championship in. So I have to wear it again in order for him to win in L.A. You know what I mean? Right. Well, These are my lucky underwear. Exactly. I don't wash them. All right. Hey, comedian Brian Sternick is uh, one of the um, uh, comedians who takes you on a tour on the Cleveland Funny Bus. We've been doing these every Wednesday in May. We're doing them every Wednesday in June. And we're going to, uh, he's going to join us here in a minute. Bill is your host tomorrow night. I have no more to give to you. And they might be sold out because they do go pretty quickly. But you can go to funnybus.net if you want to join us uh, tomorrow night because it's a great time. And so uh, we'll chat with Brian here briefly. I will also have those Royal Blood tickets for you. Those guys are back on the road. They're coming to do a North American tour, and we haven't seen them for a minute. So if you like Royal Blood, I'll have those tickets for you coming back. 35192, you want to text for anything else, you can also hit us up at alancockshow.com. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. This September, our iHeartRadio Music Festival is coming back to Las Vegas. 